Right now, there are many blockchains, from large open source variants to smaller single purpose enterprise networks, all operating as disparate and isolated silos. We need an internet of blockchains, a highly functional interoperability protocol. And that is exactly what Cosmos is trying to do. My name is Guy, and in this overview, I'll give you exactly what you need to know about Cosmos. So be sure to stick around. As usual, whatever I say should not be interpreted as investment advice. It's merely an independent analysis that could help inform your own research. And also, if you're new to the Bureau, welcome to the channel. Before moving on, I encourage you to subscribe and turn on those notifications. Get these videos straight to your inbox. All set? Great, let's continue with Cosmos. If you've been paying attention to the crypto space for the past year, then you'll no doubt have come across Cosmos and the Atom currency. The overarching goal of this project is to be the connecting fiber between all the isolated blockchains, so blockchain interoperability. The project markets itself as an independent, decentralized network of parallel blockchains. Cosmos is pretty unique in that it is powered by Tendermint, which is a Byzantine fault-tolerant consensus mechanism. We'll talk more about that in a bit. With its internet of blockchains, which the project refers to as its Cosmos hub, Cosmos creates a network of blockchains interoperating with one another. Indeed, there are a number of projects that have made interoperability one of their core tenets. Yet, this is easier said than done, as the technology required not only has to be scalable and secure, but it also has to be highly functional. So, what does this tech look like at Cosmos? Well, let's start with the basics. There are three main pieces to the Cosmos network stack. The Tendermint Core, the Application Blockchain Interface, and the Cosmos SDK. Let's start off with the Tendermint Core. This part of the Cosmos blockchain is the software solution that contains the Tendermint Byzantine Fault Tolerance, or BFT, consensus algorithm. It also houses the Inter-Blockchain Communication Protocol, or IBC. IBC is the method through which network layers and the consensus layer communicate to the hub and all the other connected blockchains, which Cosmos calls zones. You can think of it as akin to the TCP IP networking protocol that powers the internet. Next up is the Application Blockchain Interface, or ABCI. The ABCI provides for DAP replication with various programming languages. Since the interface isn't constricted to only a single language, developers can create applications on their blockchain in the language of their choice. Additionally, the ABCI is a conduit between the Tendermint core we just discussed and the Cosmos SDK, which coincidentally happens to be the next part of the Cosmos puzzle. The Cosmos SDK is the application layer of the project's network providing a basic blockchain framework to developers. This layer aids in minimizing complexity by offering the most common functionality contained within most blockchains. These are features such as staking, governance, and tokens. Developers then have the capability of creating plugins to add any additional features they want to have. They can develop these blockchains and dApps in Go, which allows them to take advantage of the Golang ecosystem. If you take this all together, the Tendermint core is the method through which consensus is achieved on the Cosmos hub. At the same time, zone blockchains keep their own consensus mechanisms without being forced to use Tendermint. Through the use of the Cosmos SDK, developers have the opportunity to create a blockchain with dApps. However, the only thing they have to worry about with Cosmos is the application layer. Thanks to the ABCI, the application state is maintained in a distinct consensus method, which means Cosmos can support a wide range of cryptocurrencies and programming languages. Blockchains that connect to Cosmos can communicate with one another through the project's IBC protocol. This is done no matter what consensus algorithm each blockchain chooses to use. It also allows for the transfer of assets amongst blockchains. Doing so won't disrupt or interfere with any contractual features the asset may have. So now that you know how the project works, let's take a moment and talk about the consensus mechanism powering the network. 
Tendermint is the first proof-of-stake consensus mechanism which makes use of the underlying principles of Practical Byzantine Fault Tolerance, or PBFT, algorithm. PBFT was initially proposed by two researchers in 1999 called Liskov and Castro. They had been researching the technology for over 30 years before releasing it. The Tendermint consensus mechanism is called Tendermint BFT, which also includes many optimizations and features that go above and beyond what is specified in the original PBFT mechanism. Using the Tendermint BFT protocol allows the network to assign the rights to generate new blocks in a random fashion using validators in a multi-round process of voting. Committing and completing the blocks needs a supermajority of the validators confirming the proposed block. In regards to Cosmos, this majority consists of two-thirds of the quorum. As a result, it may take a few rounds to finalize blocks on the network. The Tendermint BFT organizes those who are part of the network into groups of delegators and groups of validators. Delegators determine the validators that get to take part in consensus, while validators confirm transactions as they add blocks to the Cosmos network. Delegators and validators receive their rewards in the form of tokens. However, something interesting to keep in mind is that Cosmos has designed its network in a way that any cryptocurrency within the Cosmos ecosystem could potentially be used as a reward for users. Let's switch gears now and take a look at the Atom currency and its economics. Atom is the native currency that was issued on the Cosmos hub. This is the first blockchain on the Cosmos network. There may be many more tokens that follow when additional blockchains are launched. Atom tokens have three use cases within the Cosmos hub. These are 1. For fees as a spam prevention mechanism, similar to gas on Ethereum. 2. As staking tokens in order to incentivize honest node behavior. And 3. To participate in the governance of the Cosmos hub. Now, these Atom tokens were sold in an ICO in 2017 which took place over three separate rounds a private seed sale, a strategic private sale, and an eventual public sale. The private seed sale saw them sell about 5% of the supply at a price of 2.5 cents per atom, so raising about $300,000. In the strategic raise, they sold off an additional 7% of the atom supply at a price of about 8 cents per atom. This brought them in about $1.3 million. Finally, the public crowd sale took place in early 2017. Despite this being just before 2017's ICO mania, they managed to sell off 67% of the token supply at a price of 10 cents per atom. In less than half an hour, they took in about $16 million. The final 10% of the atom supply was retained by All in Bits Incorporated, which is the Tendermint team. More on this in a bit. There are currently more than 234 million atoms in total supply, while roughly 190 million of them are in circulation. And an interesting point to note here is that there is dynamic inflation built into the protocol. The number of atoms created for block rewards will depend on the amount of atoms that are currently being staked on the network. If less than two-thirds of supply is staked, then the block reward will increase up to an annualized inflation rate with a ceiling of 20%. Conversely, if the amount staked is more than this threshold, then the inflation rate will have a floor of 7%. This is a pretty ingenious design, as it provides an economic incentive for more nodes to stake. The more nodes that stake, the more secure and decentralized the network. Anyways, Atom was released in March of 2019 when the Cosmos Hub went live. Not long after this, it hit the open markets and has been surprisingly less volatile than comparable altcoins. It reached an all-time high of just over $7 in June of this year, but has retraced quite a bit. Either way, it's a pretty impressive return for those who contributed in the ICO, something that can't be said for many of the other projects that raised in 2017. Moving on though, let's take a closer look at the Cosmos team and their development initiatives. Cosmos is the brainchild of Ethan Bookman and Jay Kwon, but it's currently supported by the Interchain Foundation, or ICF. Jay Kwon is also the president of ICF. ICF contracted development of the Cosmos network to All in Bits Incorporated, the organization that does business as Tendermint Incorporated. Coincidentally, Ethan and Jay are the founders of Tendermint. Ah, now we've come full circle. 
Jay Kwon has extensive experience as a developer and as a founder, so he fits the bill nicely. Ethan Bookman has been a developer of blockchains for several years and has an in-depth understanding of their operations. And speaking of development, the team has been quite busy over the past year. They have over 86 GitHub repositories that have had extensive code commits. This is way more development than I've seen at other projects that raise considerably more money, so top marks to the team here. There's also quite a bit to look forward to in the coming year. Their roadmap is ambitious and their upcoming upgrades will do a lot to further the project. For example, Cosmos is working on proposals that will require voting with the on-chain governments mechanisms I talked about earlier. These include proposals such as adding support for IBC on the Cosmos Hub. Anyways, let's now take a look at the markets for Atom, shall we? Atom is a really popular cryptocurrency for traders. It does a whopping $200 million a day in volume. This volume is also well distributed among a range of exchanges. For example, it's listed on Binance, Huobi, OKX, Kraken, Hotbit, and many, many more. Not only is it traded on a number of different exchanges, but the volume is well distributed among them. The top 10 exchanges have over $7 million in daily turnover. This is great not only for general liquidity, but it also aids in price discovery, which leads to more efficient markets. It also means that the chance of slippage is minimal, even on larger order sizes. Once you have your atoms, you'll want to have a safe and secure place to store them. While the project itself doesn't yet have its own wallet, there are still plenty of wallets that support Atom coins. Here is a list of them, which I've also linked to below. I think it's now time to wrap things up with a few concluding thoughts. Firstly, I'm broadly impressed with the Cosmos ecosystem. Its grand ambitions seem to be pretty well matched with some pretty advanced technology. Interoperability is one of the most pertinent problems facing blockchains today. With IBC, Cosmos is providing a messaging protocol that really does have the potential to be the internet of blockchains. Add to that their unique approach to consensus with the Tendermint BFT, often touted as one of the most scalable and secure proof-of-stake systems. When the Cosmos Hub launched, there was a lot of excitement about the project. This was evidenced by the extensive trading volume that the coin garnered when listed on Binance, volume that continues to this day. And it's not just trading activity that is happening at a frenetic pace. The developers have been extremely active in the work that they've been doing on the protocol. Their GitHub commits are testament to this. Moreover, this development activity does not look like it will be slowing down anytime soon. A comprehensive and multifaceted roadmap is further evidence of this. While there's plenty to like about the Cosmos project, it does face a few challenges. For starters, there's plenty of competition within the interoperability niche. These include projects like Chainlink, OneChain, the Open Access Network, and many more. Can Cosmos carve off a piece of the market for itself? There are also concerns around whether or not Cosmos can handle what it hopes to achieve or if the project has bitten off more than it can chew. There are a lot of moving parts involved here and managing them all can be a real challenge. Indeed, this review has only covered the most salient of them. Either way, Cosmos is a project that we'd be hard pressed to ignore. And that, my fellow crypto crew, is my review of Cosmos. But I need to hear from you too. Let me know your views. Do you have any questions for me? Feel free to comment below. Oh, and if you found this overview helpful, please don't forget to smash up that like button and subscribe. My next video is just around the corner.